Coming up on Techzilla, does overclocking really do anything faster? How to make your wedding video look amazing and using a Mac hard drive on a PC. Yes, people, it's possible. So fry up that chicken leg, grab an ear of corn, and get ready to nom, because Techzilla starts now. The following episode of Techzilla is made possible by Gamefly, Squarespace, and GoDaddy.com. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you already got. Yes, whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you're in search of a painless Windows 7 install, video editing help, a faster PC, or the best bread in California, we've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll hunt down someone who does and get the answer out of them by whatever means are necessary. Indeed. Usually there we just like ask politely. Crowbars and pliers and no. Gonna get medieval we don't go, on the. We don't go there. Okay. Posterior. Don't worry, you're safe this time. <laughs> I hear your special day is coming up. Actually, well, if we think about it in terms of Texilla time, it was this past Tuesday was my birthday. We're taping on Monday. You turned 27 on Tuesday, and you're now like 27. <gasps> A lady plus. never reveals her age. It's on your Wikipedia entry. Shut up. Along with your shoe size and like where That's to shop. That's not on for my gifts. Wikipedia entry. It is now. Curses. Did you see it this morning? <laughs> No. Your shoe size is there. Oh, great. Along with some other sizes. You just made that up. I did not make that up. Did is you check? Is my shoe size really on there? Yes. Bull crap. <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. <laughs> so, anything geeky planned? Uh, no, just going out with some girlfriends. We did a birthday weekend last uh, weekend up in Napa with the boy. So no like and, uh, Jonathan Colton marathon or no. <laughs> like I'm gonna watch every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I could maybe do that. I can maybe work that in tomorrow. We'll see how cool. things go. We'll see how the schedule progresses. Take the day off from work and watch like actually how many hours of Buffy are there? Probably no more idea. than you could fit in a single Probably day. more than I could fit in a single Seven day. Seven episodes. But it was nice to, super nice to have it just a relaxing weekend. Oh we actually went to a restaurant that you guys might get a kick out of called Ubuntu in Napa. And it's not named after the distro. No. But I had a, a real uh, fun time like writing to people and saying, I'm, I'm at Ubuntu. <laughs> you have to make your own dinner. Oh. That's bad, huh? Open source meals. Open source meals. No, it's a really wonderful, it's actually an all vegetarian restaurant in Ooh. Napa. And uh, I'm, wait, I'm wait, not wait, vegetarian. Wait, 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 wait. I was going to say, <laughs> you didn't get to eat meat for your big birthday meal. Well, we had lots of meals, but this was a particularly good meal. It, ah. was, uh, it was wonderful. I mean, you don't okay, even I'm think just, about I just it. Make sure I'm a carnivore. Like a but you don't even like it, the food is so wonderful that it did not detract from I mean, my I enjoyment of it all. I love herbivores. It's a wonderful yeah, vegetarian restaurant great here too. in town. But yeah, it was so like, I, I should definitely if you have if you if you want to go for some place for a special occasion or just like a nice night out, Ubuntu in Napa is wonderful. Really great. You look so excited. Your eyes are twinkling. Are they? No, it was just Ryan a really a nice job. meal. And then we saw Harry Potter afterwards. <sighs> Oh, so. nerds in love in Napa Shut on up. birthday. Blah, blah, blah. What? Let's get to the first question. This is driving me, you're driving me crazy. All right, the first question of the day comes from a friend of yours, actually, I hear. As a matter of fact, it does. I've obviously been kind of obsessed with overclocking my Core i7 because when it came out, when I bought it, my $250, $270, 920 could be overclocked to run faster than the Core i7 CPUs. It costs three or four times as much. This is a good thing. It's like getting free performance. So a buddy of mine back east was like, okay, sure, it's great nerd bragging coins, but do you really get more work done with the processor when it's overclocked? Mm -hmm. Does anything happen faster? There's not much point to it if you don't. So let's talk about benchmarks. Did you test everything before and after? What'd you get? Well, it's kind of funny because I was like, I, I, I've been doing a ton of ripping and encoding CDs because I'm redoing my entire collection of CDs again. I thought I recognized that bing <laughs> sound every time a CD was done. Yes, and it was really funny because I'm like, okay, so, you know, it's like two 2.6 gigahertz is the stock setting. I've got it overclocked just over 3.4 gigahertz. And it, to, so to take a, like a 45 minute CD to rip it and encode it to Apple Lossless takes like a minute and 47 seconds. And on the overclock, or a minute and 47 seconds on the overclocked machine, and on the stock settings, it takes like a minute and 50 seconds. I was like, that's not much of a difference. And then I realized as I'm, you know, I'm, I'm watching it in code, and I pull up the, the, the performance monitor, and I realize it's like, 12% of a single core is doing all of the encoding. Uh, gosh, remember when it would take like 25 minutes to rip an, an entire CD? I like know. A 40 minute long CD would be like 25 minutes long to encode. And it's like CD, two minutes. I'm done. Nice. Next CD. Still to come, our favorite Twitter tools. But while we got your attention, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. And here to tell you more is our PA, Annie. 
Hi Taxilla viewers, I'm Annie and I'm here to tell you about Squarespace. I work at Revision 3, but in my spare time I blog about lame babies. So when a rival baby site popped up earlier this year, I knew it was time to step it up. That's why I imported my blog into Squarespace and I love it. I can do so much more with my blog using Squarespace than with any other publishing platform, like adding a search function, user forums, photo and multimedia galleries, an email contact form, really anything you can think of to give your visitors the most awesome possible experience, no matter what your site calls for, you can do it with Squarespace. Though, my personal favorite Squarespace feature is the built-in, detailed web analytics that you get that give you all the information you need about who's visiting your site, how they got there, and what they're doing, all in real time without a third-party plugin. So, if you're a traffic junkie like me, or just want to make your site truly stand out in a slew of clones, make the switch over to Squarespace. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. And be sure to use the code TEXI, that's T-E-K-Z, to get 10% off the entire lifetime of your order. So don't be afraid to be a square. Try squarespace.com today. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick. A free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, Ultimate Windows Tweaker. Like every version of Windows before, Vista has its share of quirks. Thankfully, there's Ultimate Windows Tweaker. This utility lets you adjust, cajole, and tweak many of the UI issues Vista users face on a daily basis, including the infamous user account control nag screen. Other useful hacks include the obligatory system restore feature in case a tweak goes awry, security tweaks, i.e. hacks, and a handy folder restore feature that restores folders still open at the time of Windows OS shutdown to be automatically opened as soon as Windows restarts. That's a really cool one. And for the speed freaks, a special system performance section to enhance the speed of Vista by turning off time-consuming functions and options. So if you're living with Vista and want that relationship to go a bit smoother and faster, you should check out Ultimate Windows Tweaker. All right, well, as we all know, either directly or from friends and associates, Twitter is the bomb. That was so lame, I'm so sorry. Uh, Twitter has reinvented the concept of social networking and blogging. No longer are you tied to a blog page to catch up with people or just on the receiving end of a one-way RSS feed. With Twitter, you can have conversations with as many or as few folks as you'd like or just follow people or groups you find interesting. Uh, we thought it would be cool if we shared our favorite Twitter tools that allow us to stay connected to the Twitterverse no matter where we are. So what are some of your personal favorites? Um. Oh, you're Twittering right yeah. now? Oh. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Are you a big fan of your, so you like the desktop clients then? I am a huge fan of the desktop client. My per I, you actually, you do a lot of stuff through the web page, which I find You know, I don't anymore, but we'll really? get to me. We'll get to me later. You okay. first. Uh, it, for me, it's all about TweetDeck at this point. It's an Adobe Air application, so it runs great on uh, OS X and Windows. They have a version of it now that I'm not as excited about for my iPhone, because I'm still like Twitterific. <laughs> Twitterific. I'm so awesome. That's, that's your favorite iPhone one? I'm Still, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of easing towards TweetDeck, but I still usually use uh, Twitterific on the iPhone. But TweetDeck is my desktop client of choice. I, mm -hmm. I run it on Windows 7, I run it on OS 10, I run it on Windows Vista. And on you can run mobile. it all on those because it's Adobe Air, correct? Yeah, and it runs smooth and clean and easy. Some people have suggested that it's a little resource intensive. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that, and even on my older, slower, beat up basic standby machine at home that I use constantly. Um, but I love the column arrangements. I love the fact that I have custom columns, custom search columns, and I can basically slide along and see what's going on. For example, today I'm, I'm actually, apparently I've lost all of my street cred uh, in the geek community, so I guess it's my geek cred because I've, I never owned a console when I was growing up. No, see, all the re email responses I saw said that you were totally uber PC hip for yeah. having never owned a console. Well, I, you know, the first like the, the first game I owned was like a Chuck Yeager flight sim <laughs> running on an, a, a compact portable 2, and I actually may have both the flight sim, I definitely still have the compact portable 2, which is still running, but I never, there were, I, I grew up in a no console hole, uh, ho ho house, house. House. house, plus I was kind of in a, you know, I think it was just partially so when I grew up, it was like the 2600 was ancient by the time I was making enough money to buy my own console. And oh yeah, the, the, the Nintendo 64 came out like after I got my driver's license. Oh, so you were out of there. I was playing football and, and, and running to Philadelphia to buy freaking REM albums. All right, fair enough. No console for you then. No console for me. Anyhow. We should talk about something more interesting, not about my, 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 the fact that I've given up on Twirl, I'm all about the tweet deck, although people don't much try Twirl again. We should talk about what you're using. I'm using Tweety. I use it on the Mac client. I, I mean, I use the Mac client. I use it on my iPhone. 
Um, that's been my favorite, it's just nice and clean. That's mm -hmm. what I love about it. I've used uh, apps like Seismic Desktop, which I think is wonderful. Uh, I like, I actually prefer that over TweetDeck. Cool. Um, yeah, it's just they've had a lot of new features announced recently, and I just think it's a really nice way to stay on top of all your searches and all your friends and making groups. Um, however, it's a little too much for me. That whole right. multi-column, uh, you know, many different kinds of views, all your replies up there at the same time. It's just too much. Like, See, for I me, just the like columns to be able to. Are what makes it, to have all of the columns running simultaneously makes it useful. I'll I've seen people are either super, super um, simplified right. or they like all the crap going on at the same time and seeing everything. Like, uh, Ryan actually opens up separate versions of Tweety. He actually has distinct windows up, right. so it looks like a column view, but it's all the different accounts up on one screen at the same time, that's which you can actually do. So he, to me, that's kind of abusing the whole point of Tweety being really simplified and having mm -hmm. all your accounts there on the left-hand side. Uh, you can click on them and see when you have new replies and see when you have new direct messages. It's just perfectly simple for me. I love it. She's so happy. So that's my favorite one. Um, I've used other ones like... Uh, Twitterific has actually been one of my favorites in the past. I think it's really great for the iPhone. They keep making really nice updates for it, especially the paid version. Right. Um, another app that's been getting a lot of play lately is BirdFeed, and that's also a pay app. I think it's like five dollars. <laughs> I haven't used it myself yet, but all my all my friends have been saying, "Oh, you gotta try BirdFeed. It's great." I'm not really sure what's so special about it. It does do um, cached mm -hmm. use, so you can you know Twitter when you're not connected to Wi-Fi or to your you know. Basically, like you can service. answer things and do things. Yeah, just like queue things online. up, probably is what I imagine. That's so you can, well, send you can it all catch out. up with the hundred messages yes. you need to respond to. Yes, exactly. Uh, Roger is a at big Jolly fan. At Jolly Roger. At Jolly Roger, Our rather. <laughs> he is a BlackBerry user, of course, and he is a fan of uh, uh, Twitterberry. Twitterberry. And Tiny Twitter. And Twitterberry when it works, and Tiny Twitter when it doesn't work. Yeah. Those are kind of his two mainstays. And what about Serafina on her G1? At uh, Serafina. K. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Twidroid, actually, when she's running on her Android. Mm -hmm. There's tons of different apps out there. You just have to find the one that works best for you. Or just go to Twitter.com or run it through the website. Yeah, it works either way. If it way. works for you, don't fix it. <laughs> if it's not broke, don't fix it. And we should hit uh, at Brett the Monster, our floor director, who's very angry. If you were watching our, our Twitter feed, you may have caught me mocking Brett. Because, Why is he teasing us? Because I think because we didn't mention at Brett the Monster. Sorry, Anybody else? at Brett Annie? the Monster. Wah, wah, wah. At any Gauss. That's Annie the PA. Annie the PA. We didn't even say our Twitter names. Well, I'm at Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica. Coming up next, assigning tasks to different cores in your multi-core PC, but first... Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. Video games are cheap, and sometimes they suck. If you're dropping 50 bucks in a new title, you can get stuck. Enter Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service. They've got over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Instead of gambling 50 bucks in a new game, how about $15.95 a month to become a Gamefly member? You can burn one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as you like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing the game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Discounts are good, right? And Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. How about a two-week free trial? Techzilla fans get a two-week free trial when they sign up at Gamefly.com slash Techzilla. Some restrictions apply. Please see the site for details. And please, support Techzilla by trying out our sponsors like Gamefly. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, MyUS. On Techzilla, we sometimes make product recommendations for items that aren't available outside the United States. Since we have an international audience, I thought I'd highlight a service that can help you get the gear you need no matter where you're located. MyUS will actually give you a US street address that you can enter as your shipping information, and then they'll forward your package using FedEx or DHL to your international address. They even have a personal shopper that will help you pay for your items using their US credit card or PayPal account. They'll automatically deduct the charges from your account. They'll even send checks or money orders to eBay users who only accept those methods of payment. The service isn't free, but the rates seem pretty reasonable for international shipping. It's not just packages, too. You can have your mail forwarded to you while you're away, or even subscribe to U.S. magazines or newspapers. For your international shipping and mail forwarding needs, check out myus.com today. 
All right, we got a video question from Seth out in Pittsburgh who needs help making his wife happy. What? But not in the way you think. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I think I'll let Seth tell us what he needs help with himself. Hey, Patrick and Veronica, Seth from Philadelphia. Um, my wife and I got married a year ago. We have one of those DV tapes that are about this big. We want to get it onto to the computer to edit it. We need a good pair of freeware application or nice inexpensive video application to edit it. And then we want to be able to throw it back on a DVD in high quality so we can watch it on a big screen TV. Um, suggestions, um, freeze better, but let, please let me know. What a lovely husband you are. Isn't he sweet? All right, well, the first thing you want to do is get that tape digitized. Uh, since you have a DV tape, you'll probably need to find a surface that does dubs and have them digitize the tape to a hard drive. Medium, big size city, look for like video services, video pro, ask, you know, yeah, ask Yeah, there's just straight up dubbing services that'll, yeah. that'll do that for, you know, not super bucks. cheap, but you know, if it's worth your while, then yeah, it's I mean, worth the money. Last time I had one basically transferred, I think it cost 50 bucks. The thing is, is the deck costs 5,000. They're going <laughs> to run it to a hard drive or a thumb drive or a videotape that you can't access. See if they can get it to like digitize it into a form you can use, probably a dot move or a dot AVI format, either on a DVD or on a hard drive or on a thumb drive. If they could just set this. Um, and then, of course, you're going to need something to edit with. Right. If you have Windows XP or Vista Home Premium or Ultimate, you can try out Movie Maker and Movie Maker HD and Vista. Uh, they're built in video editors that'll let you do the basics. If you're an owner of a store bought Mac, you have iMovie, which I hate, I hate, I hate. I hate, love hate iMovie. iMovie. The new the, the, the <laughs> interface redesign twigged me out a lot, but the original iMovie I'm a huge fan no, of. No, I just can't get into it. It's just it's so I must use Final Cut to the full version of well, nothing. Well, no, but okay, okay. I was trained how to video edit on Final right. Cut, like a lot of people who went to like did, so you know, you're took video editing classes snob for. Person. So I'm a total elitist snob. See, for me, that's yes. like bringing a nuclear bomb to a freaking. Well, now knife I don't fight. know. I can't use iMovie because it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> like I can't do any of the crap that I'm used to being able to do. Because you, you want to do I mean? big fancy stuff. Well, no, I mean just yeah. Never mind. That's this my is problem. A topic it's like I turned, day. I turned every video editing tool into like a freaking 1960s. It's a pain in my ass. Okay. It is a pain in my ass. Most of the rest of you will be perfectly happy with the free tool as, as an entry level, as a basic tool. You know, iMovie or the tool that are inside of Windows should do you fine. You know, I th I've seen a lot of great videos done straight in iMovie or, yeah, or the, the Windows. Yeah, you can do a lot of great stuff with them. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying you can't, just for me, it's not not very workable. Um, something else you might want to look into would be like Sony's Vegas Movie Studio. A step up, if you will. A little step up, yeah. It costs 55 bucks and it has a free trial version, so you can, you know, test it out, play around with it, yeah. and see if you like it. Um, plus, it also includes a DVD authoring program. While not too fancy, we'll certainly get the job done if you want to make DVDs of your special day and pass yeah. them out to friends and family members. That free tool inside of there. It's not going to handle HD video or burn Blu-ray discs, but it'll support 16 by 9 authoring so you can go widescreen on a DVD. If you do want HD editing along with a disc burning in a single package, check out TMPG Inc. Authoring Works 4. It's a bit more template driven, but this application does provide support for simple HD video editing and disc authoring. Costs a bit more, about 100 bucks, but it also comes with a trial version you can check out that's good for 14 days. Now, there are more than a few open source and free video editing and DVD authoring tools, none of which we can recommend without some pretty serious qualifications, i.e. there's a massive learning curve with most or not all of them, not to mention some understanding of different codecs that you may not want to get into. Yeah, so you start getting your like little feet stuck in all that yeah. stuff after a while. When you just want to do something simple, you don't really need to know all that. Yeah, I mean, it's, if you don't want to be a video editor, like start with the free tool because you see the face I'm making. It's like start with the free tools, or spend some money, or be willing to invest a lot of time because some of the, especially some of the, some of the free tools just get really weird. With married life, I'm sure he doesn't have that much free time these days. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we probably really recommend shelling out a little bit of cash and saving yourself some pain and trauma if none of the free applications we mentioned earlier don't solve your problems. Try out the trial versions of the paid applications and see if there's something you'd like to keep. Hey, and you know, if you want to do some forward thinking for people who are not yet married, <laughs> put some DVD authoring software on your registry. Oh, hey, what do you, do you know about registries? Nothing. <laughs> Want to make me happy? Send us in a video question. Just record yourself in front of a video camera asking a question. Make sure it's no longer than 15 seconds. Upload your question to YouTube, then email us a link to your fabulous video question with the redundant video question in the subject line. It's so easy. Try sending us one today. Our next question comes from Brian who writes in, is there a way to assign a core or cores to a specific task or program? Thanks. Fellow Techzillian Brian. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can. It's just a simple right click away. Yeah, okay, you right click on the process in the task manager, you set the affinity. Whether you'll actually see any performance increase though is a different question. Yeah, and there's some discussions on like Tom's hardware, yeah, World of Warcraft forums, well, for example. A lot of people are like, I'm, I'm gonna move like this to this core and this to that core and that over there. And the reality <laughs> is Windows actually does a pretty good job load balancing and performance gains, I'm mean, gonna say, you might see one, I'm doubting you're gonna see anything. I mean, if Windows hasn't taken care of it, it's probably not gonna be improved by you trying to manually create Well, I'd create love to know if affinity. anyone out there has actually seen any kind of performance right. boost from it, if you've tried it. Especially if it's quantifiable in some way. Yes. A lot of people are like, you know, I oh, bought yeah, this. Oh yeah, it's way better. Yeah, you it's know. It's awesome. I got this stuff at Kragen and I put it in my gas tank and I'm like freaking four times fast now in my car. Is that like our dude bra? Uh, dude bra. Boys, dude bra, it's like totally <laughs> awesome, it's over. So uh, Coming up next, your responses about key mapping to use controllers with your PC. But first, let's thank GoDaddy.com. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. Dot-com names are as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and quite a bit more. Your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and online businesses that aren't what they claim to be, and worried that their personal and financial information might fall into the wrong hands. Turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage with the ironclad protection of a GoDaddy.com secure certificate. Want to score a discount? Enter in code TECH4, that's T-E-K-4 when you check out, you'll save an additional 15% off any order of $75 or more. Some restrictions apply, please see the site for details. And do us a favor here at TechZilla, get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. All right, our next email is from Rob. He writes, I have two Mac HFS formatted hard drives that I want to use with my new HP Mini. I cannot get my Windows XP OS to see my drives in my computer so I can reformat it for my PC. Any suggestions on how to get those hard drives to be seen? They're well, playing hard to get. Yeah, actually, it's, it's kind of funny. Like The problem here is not only can your PC not see HFS formatted drives because they can't see HFS partition drives either. It's all Greek to your Windows installation. So you're going to need to go into the Windows Disk Manager and repartition them. That's if you don't need the data off those drives. If you do need the data off those drives, don't partition them because <laughs> you will make all of the data go away forever. Don't do that. That would be bad. I've done that. Don't do that. It's <laughs> awkward and painful and then you weep because you've lost those fabulous pictures. If you do need to retrieve the data off the drive, just use Mac Drive for MediaForm. Works amazing, allows your Windows machine, whether it's XP or Vista, not quite Windows 7 yet, but we expect that in the near future, uh, basically allows you to access HFS, HFS Plus formatted drives. It works great, costs about 50 bucks. I use it all the time. Not bad, nice easy question there. I like that thought. Nice simple and easy <laughs> answer. Um, Mike out in Kansas wrote in and asked the following. I saw in a recent show that you kind of dodged the Drobo idea. I'm considering getting one for my home server. What do you like or dislike about it, and what do you recommend if you do not like the Drobo. Did we, uh, I don't remember dodging the Drobo question. I don't know. I guess you want to hear more about it, so that's okay. good. This is a Drobo, right? There's basically, no. it's a storage device. Technically, it's not a network attached storage device because there's no networking built into it, but like you, I would just be connecting to a server in most cases. So basically, the, the whole point of this, though, is that it's it's your data robot. It's your storage data manager robot. It's your little robot. data buddy. Your little, little data buddy. buddy. And some people, swappable. there's two things we hear all the time. It's like, you know what? I can I can buy a RAID, a traditional RAID five for less than that, or I could buy one of those little two drive RAID zero, RAID one boxes for less than that. Um, you know, and it's not fast enough. And I haven't benchmarked in a while. I've been playing around with benchmarking this versus some of the other devices out there, mm -hmm. like a, a you know Windows Home Server and stuff. And I haven't really gotten any benchmarks that I really like. But what I have done is administered RAID 5 NAS boxes. If you're into RAID 0 that's striping, it's fast, it combines two drives by writing across them, that's not safe. One of the drive goes, you, you lose all your data. With a RAID 1, the idea is that you mirror your drive, you have drive A and drive B, and they have exactly the same data on them, so if one fails, the other one is still good. Well, that's the same, but these are redundant as well, aren't they? This is more like a RAID 5, because it offers a mixture of mirroring and striping with parity data that allows, so if, if this hard drive dies, a red light goes on and I pop it out and I put a new drive in. That's great. That's, that's basically what a RAID, a RAID 5 or, you know, very big, traditionally like a RAID 5 is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about the Drobo, and you notice it's like it's green and yellow right now because I just did some stuff to it. It's updating things and it's going to go all green. It doesn't look happy, it's but it's fine. <laughs> it doesn't look happy. Basically, it's, it's protecting things. It's moving bits around. Um, what's interesting about these is on a traditional RAID, all the drives have to be the same size. 
right? So you need five 500 gigabytes or five one terabyte or five two terabyte drives. And if you want to update them, you have to replace all five drives. You also need something big enough to copy all of your data from the old one onto the new one. So if you're doing video production and you fill a RAID every six months, mm -hmm. you end up with either two RAIDs, so you can ping pong back and forth, or you borrow or swap or beg or steal, so you can get all of the data off of one, and you can put your fresh new hard drives in and format it and administer it and set it up, and you move all your data back on it. And that's what a lot of people don't realize by a lot of traditional RAIDs. Um, they're not the cheapest thing out there, but they really are easy to maintain. And if a drive dies, you basically pop the old drive out and pop a new one in. Yeah, I think these are good for 16 terabytes, which is pretty much like you can't really see the end of that. Well, at, at this, this point, point anyway. But, yeah, you, you've got you've got a maximum space. I think two terabyte drives now are the max that, that I've seen for sale. So okay. you got a maximum of eight terabytes of storage minus some storage. Basically, it uses some of the data. You don't get a full eight terabytes. Some of the the, the space in the drives is reserved for that parity. Mm -hmm. Parity data allows you to move things back and forth or recover dead drives. Um, yeah, they're you know they're the thing is it's not a NAS. You're gonna need to connect it to a server, or to your computer, or to well, you get the Drobo share right. to do the network stuff. Yeah, I mean if 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 you're cheap, you attach it to like a free NAS, or you attach it to one of your desktop computers, and you share the drive. The Drobo share is interesting because it also lets you run additional applications. People mm -hmm. write little you know. Uh, just little applications that run inside the Drobo share. It's like a little Linux server that you plug this into. It's like 200 bucks though. Yeah, but I mean, if you're already throwing down the money for this guy and you want it to make it work for you in new <laughs> right. in wonderful ways, well, it might be worth it. Oh, you know, and I forgot kind of the best thing about it. It does allow you to mix and match different drive sizes. So as larger drives, I usually swap them in pairs or, or you know, all four. Basically, as, as things start to fill up, you take out one of your smallest drives and you swap in one of the larger new drives. It works better if the drives are all relatively close in size. If you have like two that are 250 gigabytes and two that are two terabytes, your, your storage, you're gonna look like you don't have much storage because you need enough parity data to back up those two big drives. I'm not gonna get into that right now. It's gonna be really confusing. Check out those little tools on Drobo you can investigate it with. I love my Drobo. I trust my Drobo. My Drobo has my baby pictures on it. Oh. You know, and we also have baby pictures stored off site in case my Drobo is swallowed by the earth when the giant earthquake that comes next to San Francisco eats my house. Yes, oh. so we are Drobo fans around here. Yeah, and we're also fans of FreeNAS, which is a free open source tool for building your own network attached storage device. I have an old PC. Unrage really cool because it sort of mimics some of the effects of the Drobo by, by allowing you to sort of mix and, max, mix and match drives in different sizes. There's a ton of ways to back up your data, keep your data safe. Um, I like the Drobo because it's a really slick and easy to administer tool. You know, you know, even with the little Drobo dashboard on my systems, you may prefer a FreeNAS or an Unraid box or a traditional RAID box. But I like the Drobo. It's like a good it. device. Yes, good it is. device. All right, well, we got some good responses to John's question last week about key mapping software for the PC so you can use your console controller with your PC gaming box. Uh, the two biggest suggestions that we got, and there were probably like 10 emails. So I'm not going to say all of you, but good work. <laughs> good work on your part. Uh, the two biggest suggestions were XPatter, which is $16, and Pinnacle Game Profiler, which is about $20. Um, both pieces of software will allow you to map controls to many different kinds of console controllers. I mean, we're talking going all the way back to like Nintendo 64, or like wow. joystick controllers, that kind of stuff. The downside, however, is that they're not free like the solutions that we gave last week, um, but they do work pretty well. And several people pointed out that you can find earlier versions of XPatter for free online, although we love supporting developers. Developers. And if you do buy the most recent version, you'll get all future versions and updates for free. Um, but like we said, most newer PC games for Windows should have support already built in for using the Xbox 360 controller right out of the gate. And uh, so you probably don't even need key mapping software for those. But if you want to use it for like controlling Windows, for example, which is kind of cool, you can do that with these software options. They should help you out. I'm, I'm not allowed to talk about this because I didn't have a console game as a child, therefore I I'm not allowed to I talk think it's about so funny that anymore. people gave you a hard time because everyone that I saw who wrote in was like, oh, Patrick's so badass <laughs> for never using a console. That's so cool. I don't know. I've been on and off on Twitter, so maybe I'm just catching it when people are like, you never even had a 2600 liar. Somebody uh, was actually like, I call BS on that. It's true. Never had a console game growing you up. You don't call BS on Patrick Norton. Sure he you do. He tells it to you straight. My mother calls BS on me. Well, but... she's your mother. She's allowed. Speaking of video games, check out Revision 3's video game show. It's called Co-op. 
The next episode features all top flight indie projects that you will not want to miss. On the iPhone, it's the venerable Critter Crunch. On the 360, they'll be featuring the irreverent Explosion Man with exclusive footage of a never before seen level. And to top it all off, Brad Schumacher from Giant Bomb stops by to talk about the utterly fantastic fantasy RPG platformer for the PC, Tree or Try. You want to find out how it's actually said? Check out Co-op every Tuesday at revision3.com slash co-op. And for all you watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech L product reviews and how-tos, you ask us, we'll do it. But we need those emails. So don't be shy, send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Or even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Fantastic fantasy, 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 fantastic fantasy, fantasy. Baby, look at me, baby, baby. <laughs> hey, baby, look at me, baby. Tweaking. Ah. All right, Seth, you're a good husband. First off, but the first thing, you know, three. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't come out right. It didn't come out right. It's a different and hotly debated question. Whoops. Sorry, we're gonna be a while. I gotta get off the phone Guy now because they're now mocking me and videotaping it. <laughs> so embarrassed. <laughs> I'd like to point out that it's the second week this has happened. Mr. Norton, cell phone on. I'm watching you. It was on last week. I got week. my eye on you. Were you the week here before. last week? Yes. Oh, that was the week before you were gone. Coming up next. <laughs> I have no idea what's coming up next. <laughs> what's this? <gasps> It's oh. the legendary <laughs> birthday chicken! <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday to you! Happy birthday to oh, you! Oh, you guys are gonna make me cry. Happy birthday, birthday dear Veronica! <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday! <laughs> Yay! Yay! I hope it will set off a fire. Yeah. Fire alarms. Oh, you guys! I was actually chicken. hoping you'd stick the candle in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is there really right, a bucket I'll, of chicken I'll, in here? I want to get the cake in the shot. Oh. <laughs> Can you see the cake where it says... Happy birthday, Veronica. Oh, you guys are so nice. Thank you! Thank you.